Let's welcome to the Rostrum, all right? And he's here with his lovely wife, Pastor Kingsley Okonko. Glory to God. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Can you lift your hand in one minute and just thank the Lord for 2024? Thank the Lord for Wolf Beck. We're starting the year strong. Starting it in God. Starting it in the Word. Starting it in the Spirit. Starting it in fellowship. Starting it in wisdom. Lord, we thank you. We acknowledge today everything you have given us. Thank you. Zebro da Sakaya. Let us gades kura da hasti. Ledra de kozania kalos kala kilia da sata. Rita du sakadia le kando sukayaba. Lide kura di kadaya sakadu ya kadiado. Rito bariata li kados. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the word of prophecy that has gone forth in this year. Makade Yakola Daya. Rito Bariata. All the revelations, all the ministrations in this conference so far. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody excited, give the Lord a big shout, a big praise. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Please take your seat. Have you told your neighbor Happy New Year? Tell them Happy New Year. Amen. You know, some people were angry that why are we doing crossover service as Christians? You know, the people that get angry with everything. Uh, the Bible says, give custom to whom custom is due, honor to whom honor due. God is not against customs. We can develop any custom we like. So it's a good custom. You know there are some people's custom is to be at nightclub in crossover. It's their custom, where, and we didn't disturb them. Some people say Jesus was not born on Christmas Day. I don't care the day is the morning. As long as he's born. Are you getting what I'm saying? If, they, if your birthday is Thursday, must you do the party on Thursday? Most likely you do the party when? Saturday. So any day is born. We would, the whole world agree that we want to celebrate his birthday in December. Eh, it's not bad. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Now, a new year started. I said, why are we gathering in church? It's our custom. We start every year with meetings like this to plan the word of God for the year. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So don't let anybody harass you. We develop our own customs and traditions to favor our spiritual work. Glory to God. So are you happy like me to be at Wolfbeck 2024? Come on, let's give the Lord a big, big praise. Amen. Um, and I want to make it clear, Pastor Kwaju said that I said I was not going to retaliate. I didn't say that. I was not going to retaliate yet. I will retaliate. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the right time and the right place. <laughs> Maybe to when we'll be at Southwest Believers Conference, I'll retaliate there. But I'm waiting for the opportunity. Praise God. But it's such an honor to be ministering here again in 2024. Such, such an honor. Um, I am Pastor Kodjo. Relationship has come a long way. Um, I don't want to use all my time to talk about our history, but we've come a long way, and um, it has been a great, great relationship. From the first day I listened to him, I knew we were going to have a relationship. You know, there are some relationships like that. So of you, that's how you meet your husband or wife. From the first day you were here, you say, that's how somebody did my wife. I first heard her before I saw her. Yes, it was dark. A few of us were in front of her house. I, was, I couldn't see her, but I was hearing what she was saying. I said, this girl is smart. 
So I collected her number uh, to check up on her. I've been checking up on her now for about 18 years. And she's doing okay. She's here with me. Help me appreciate my beautiful wife, Pastor Mildred. <laughs> she's such a fine girl. Please, after this meeting, give me your number. Your account number. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. See, this life is too hard for you to marry wrong. The challenges in this life is too much for you to carry problem inside your house. You will marry well. <laughs> so I appreciate Pastor Koji. I appreciate Pastor Tony. Can we appreciate Pastor Tony? Thank you. Thank you. Um, for hosting this meeting. Like um, Pastor Yemi said, this meeting is not just for Lagos. It's not even just for Covenant. It's, um, it's a global thing that a lot of people look forward to all over the world. And um, we also greet all the online audience. We know you are watching. Let's appreciate the online audience. God bless you from everywhere. Um, how many of you enjoyed Pastor Yemi? Awesome. You know, he mentioned that uh, he was talking to Pastor Bimbo and saying that he didn't look like this that time. I, I, I can confirm <laughs> that story. I knew him that time. It's true. He didn't look anything. Like this. He's not lying. He's a man of God. <laughs> he said, what of me? Pastor, we're talking about you. <laughs> we both didn't look like this. We didn't look like this. And like Pastor Yemi said, some people miss God's best because they are looking only at the natural. Praise God. So Pastor Bimbo, thank you for doing an amazing, amazing, amazing job. Please let's appreciate Pastor Bimbo, David. And all the servants of God in the house, friends and brothers and uh, colleagues, God bless you. Good to see all of you in the house this afternoon. Praise God. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna share. As I, I, like, I like the theme of the meeting. Um, mountain moving faith. Praise God. Why that is important, why I like it is because faith doesn't move God. Did somebody get that? Faith doesn't move what? God. Yeah, as a young believer, I got that impression. In fact, I think we're even taught like that, that we have to use our faith to move God. Faith doesn't move God. Faith moves mountains, but it does not move God. Giving the impression to believers and to people that faith moves God, it makes God look more reactive than proactive. God is not reactive. Oh, I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. Telling people that their faith will move God makes it look like God is reactive. That he wasn't mindful of who you are and what you are going through. That you are the one that gave him update. <laughs> that God, Nigeria is hard. And God said, ah! Since when? <laughs> So you see, you see, and, and today I want to really speak to the body of Christ. Like I said, I know that this altar is not just for covenant, so it's for the body. I want to speak to the body of Christ. We need to reevaluate our syllabus. And I've been a pastor for close to 30 years, so I cannot exonerate myself from what I'm talking about. But it's just high time. You know, if you don't regulate yourself, life or other circumstances will regulate you. Uh -huh. And they won't do it the way you like. Giving the impression that we are moving God makes God look reactive instead of proactive. It makes it look like we are the one making him move. But that's not what the scripture paints him like. John 3.16, most popular scripture. The whole Bible is summarized in John 3.16. I say that all the time. All my car personalized number plates are John 3.16. Because that's how much I love the scripture. The car I brought today, the number plate is 316. My other the truck, the number plate is 316, Roman figure. When I had a motorcycle, it's three, I, everything in my life is 316. 
If you play sporty bet, okay, no, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't. <laughs> For you to be laughing, you need to check your Christianity. How do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> For, I'm suspecting you, why you laugh? What do you know I'm talking about? Thank you for those that are not laughing. You are good Christians. <laughs> so John 3, but I, I, okay. John 3, 16. It summarizes the gospel. For God what? So it is love that moves God. That's the first thing you need to know. God is moved by his love and he always moves first. Every time you position yourself like you are moving first, it is going to affect your attitude. I will show you how. Let's finish reading. Look at what it says. For God so what? That he did what? So what was God's motivation? I can't hear you. What was God's motivation? Love. So he was proactive. He loved us, he moved. And he gave. Then he says that whosoever what? Believes. In him should not what? But do what? So God was proactive. He moved. We believed. Then we receive. That's why your faith moves situations, moves circumstances. Your faith really helps you receive what God has given. It doesn't make God give. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? The reason why this is important is because every time you think your prayer is moving God and you pray and you don't get results, you will start thinking this God is wicked. There are many people offended with God. Some threatened God, even at the crossover. <laughs> that God is 2024. If I don't marry this year, if I don't travel this year, if I don't get my breakthrough this year, you will see my true color. <laughs> Thank you, chameleon. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chameleon and Mrs. Chameleon. They have many color. They pray. This is why people are afraid. I have, when I hear people say they're offended with God, I have never been offended with God. The moment you understand that, you can never out-ask God. He has always out-given what you can ever ask. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? From his own end, there's abundance. Scarcity is from this end. Never from his own end. He has already overgiven. He said, how we, if he could give you his only son, how will you not with him also freely give you how many things? All things. There's nothing you can ask him that he will be shocked. He said, Lord, I'm 38. I need to marry. He said, eh? <laughs> Sister Jane, so you, you two are thinking of marriage. <laughs> this is the impression people have. They are updating God. They are updating a, 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 a God that is nonchalant and reluctant and out of touch. He said, he, he, we are not dealing with a priest that is not touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Every time we are going through pain, God goes through the pain. He feels it. He knows. He knows. God knows what it's like to not to have enough. He, remember, he came down to the earth in form of Jesus. The only reason is for him to really walk in our shoes. So he knew what it's like not to have transport fare. But when nobody was looking, he walked on water quickly. <laughs> See, there's nobody here. Let's just, from Ikorodu to Ikoyi, let's just. He walked on water quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. He knew what it's like to be at the wedding and the wine goes out. Not to have enough money for the wedding. He knew what it's like to have a crowd to feed and just have, you know, two fish and five fish or loaf or whatever. So he's, we're not dealing with the high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of what? How I found it. So when you are dealing with a God that you, you think he's reactive, you will blame him. So because when you pray, you know, answer, the impression is that, so God, you knew I was suffering. So you knew what I was going through and you refused to answer. That's the impression. So many people have left the faith because of that. 
that my auntie was sick. I prayed and you didn't heal her. You're a wicked God. The moment you understand that from his own end, from his own end, everything has been approved. From his own end, it has been approved. Inside Christ, they put everything you will ever need. It's inside Christ. When he gave you that gift of Christ, if you knew what he gave you, you'd be dancing every day. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. God is not reactive. He is what? Proactive. He is the initiator. Thank God for what Pastor Yemi preached on the covenant. The covenant was not initiated by Abraham. Oh, I don't know. Did you listen to the message at all? The covenant, even the one that went to bring uh, Meshifo, was it Mesh? That guy's name is her. Me. Mephi. Mephi. Was it the one that came to ask David? It's David that looked for him. God did it. God is always the initiator. It wasn't Abraham that said, God, come and swear. It's God that said, I will swear. So whenever you position God as somebody reacting, he will look very wicked. He will look very inconsistent. That means we don't know whether he's going to answer or not. I can tell you for free, all his answer is yea and amen. That's why you will hardly see in the New Testament God saying no. Now, this doesn't mean sometimes he will not navigate you through when you're praying off key. He will navigate you, yes. Because sometimes what you're praying for will kill you. So even the no is yes, you just don't know. Say, Lord, Lord, I want to live long. I want to live long. In Canada, God said you died there cold to kill you. <laughs> so, yes means stay in Lagos. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? But, ordinary. <laughs> you know, Canada code is not, it's not smiling. So, ordinary. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody prophetically, that's why. The person knows himself. So, carry jacket. So, um, <laughs> so, ordinarily, you will not see God saying no to people in the New Testament. When Peter says, I want to walk on water, you know, people say, oh, you, when you're asking something, it must be something for the kingdom. It must be something holy. Something, no. Peter just said, Master, you're walking on water. See if like so. <laughs> See if it's you. Ask me to come. He said, I want to walk on water. For flex, there's no kingdom agenda. <laughs> it's just for flex that uh, people, they walk for water. Hallelujah. And what was Jesus' answer? Say, yeah, come. Yeah, we roll like that sometimes. <laughs> it's religion that tells people that God is always measuring. Like when I came here last year, we read James chapter 1. He said, when you ask of God, he gives to all men liberally and upbraided not. That's, he doesn't look for reasons why you disqualify, why you're not qualified. No fault finding. He gives liberally generously. Are you here, somebody? So, faith does not move God. God has been moved by his love he has for you. This is why I can't be angry with God. When you know how much God loves you, see, there's nobody that loves you like God. Nobody can love, even you can't love you like God. Have, have there been times you desired something that was not good for you? Has it happened to you before? So even you, you can't even trust your love. Your love for yourself is even dangerous. There are some of you here, you have stayed with a boyfriend, he's, he's maltreating you, but you are holding on. So even you don't love yourself. God will set you free. I'm, like Pastor said, I'm a counselor, the kind of stories I hear. Say, Pastor Kinsley, there's this boy, he beats me. He cheat on me. He insults me. What should I do? <laughs> Serve him tea. <laughs> what should you do like how? <laughs> you have already answered the question. What are you waiting for there? 
Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Come on, say with me. Faith moves mountains, but does not move God. Faith doesn't move God. Our faith moves situations, moves mountains. I, I like what um, Pastor Podju said in his earlier session. Please, this way of back works is that you need to watch all the sessions. I hope you know. Uh -huh. So don't, don't just say, I came for 2 o'clock and you're going to sleep. Watch everything. So I, I, I love something Pastor Podju said. And it's something I also preached the earlier December in our church. That there's nowhere Jesus prayed to God for a miracle. Nowhere in scripture. All the miracles of Jesus, we examined it in church. We read as many of them as we could. All the miracles of Jesus, he never prayed to God that God come on. Pastor, but you also mentioned it um, today. He never prayed to God. He worked miracles. He performed miracles. He didn't ask God to come and do miracles. Never did. All the miracles. He either spoke to situations, spoke to circumstances, never called God. In fact, when he got to one of them, the one that he walked on water, no, the one that he, um, he, he was in the boat and the boat was about to sink, the Bible said he rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. That means he even addressed them differently. You know that, you need to know the one to rebuke, the one to talk to. The symptoms, you rebuke that one. Then you talk to your body, be calm, you are healed. Are you getting what I'm saying? You rebuke the adverse economy and you speak to your account, be cool, be loaded, be loaded. <laughs> you don't rebuke your account, your account is not your enemy. So I noticed he rebuked the wind. Say, wind, stop it, get up. Then he told the seed, because the seed is carrying us to where we're going. He said, be still. <laughs> Somebody get what I'm saying? This means he was so proficient at speaking to things that he knew that I need to speak to them differently. So proficient. Don't call your child stupid. Rebuke stupidity. Then tell your child you are wise. You are a success. Don't tell you he's a mad boy. Eh? Rebuke madness. But speak calmness to your child. Are you getting what I'm saying? Nowhere in scripture did Jesus pray to God for a miracle. No way. He, he always activated it because faith doesn't move God. Faith doesn't move what? If you see James chapter 1 verse 5, say if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask of what? That give it to all men liberally and upgrade not. He said, but let him ask in faith. Not in wavering. For he that wavers like we have received in and tossed, let that man not think he will receive anything. So the faith helps you receive. Has nothing to do from God's end. God's end means he has already provided. 2024 will be sweet for you. Yeah. I said 2024 will be sweet for you. Yeah. So what I noticed, like I said, we have done such a disservice to the body of Christ. We have done such a disservice. And, and, and I want to challenge us from this point. Can we do more of telling people in Christ what they have instead of what they do not have. Ah, all our, not all, a lot of our messages, a lot of our prayer points is focused on what people don't have instead of what they have. Hey, let me tell you a secret, don't tell anybody. What you have is more than what you don't have. In fact, when you know what you have, what you don't have does not matter. It's not who left, it's who is left. You're worried about who left. Be focused about who did not leave. Who is left is more important than who left. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. From today, make, try and listen to messages from Nigeria in particular. Listen to messages, listen to prayer points. Is focused on anything chasing you. Anything blocking the door. If we, you know, um, Pastor, could you play the prophecy that Kenneth Kupla was saying about how God wanted to bring the, the kind of prayers and teaching we are doing in Nigeria, we can't produce that kind of result. Somebody that something is chasing, he will now develop software. Something is chasing him. 
He's spending his whole time dodging what is chasing him. From today, I give all of you a task, and for those watching online in the body of Christ in Nigeria, please take note of our messages and our prayer points. 99% of prayer points is telling people what they don't have. Anything chasing you, the only thing chasing you is goodness. Yes. We're not reading Bible anymore. The way we are going, we'll soon start wearing white garments. Because we have entered all kinds of, of gymnastics. We have entered, because we need to, because the more you tell people what they don't have and you can't give them, you'll be coming up with exercise. <laughs> Go and watch. I say, if you're a young Christian, you might not understand, but those of you that have been around a while, you notice that the things just go around in circles. This week can be fire week, next week water week. The other week, jump week, next week lie down week. Because you must come up with different things to keep people busy. Because you have told them they don't have and they can't have. You, the kind of things we say in Africa is that these are the Imba months. From October, November, December, people die a lot. Whose scripture is that? And okay, even if you say that, maybe no problem. I want to hear the solution. Then you will hear, come on so and so. I'm going to pray for you. So, okay, so after the Zumba month, what if there's a problem in January? What will I do? Because you've told me the solution to the Zumba month is your special prayer line. You see, these are the things we are doing in Africa. There's no security. I'm the one that will pray and declare security. Thank you, Chief Security Officer. <laughs> but what of next month, after Amber months? I mean, people don't die in accidents in January. You need to give people something that they won't need you. Pastor said it. That Jesus' teaching was to make people not need him. Pastor, what you said it today. But Nigerian Christian teaching, you will need the pastor. Is built around fear, and he's the only provider. So you must follow him every week. It's not Bible. Not, we're not yet reading Bible in Africa. We mix different religions in our Nigerian Christianity. It's not yet pure. When it's pure Christ, human beings will be free. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? We have done a disservice. We've told people what they don't have, what they can't do. Any door that is closed. Listen, just listen to the prayer point. Just take your time. Anytime you see a preacher, just listen to the prayer point. It must be, deficit. It must be based on deficit. It can never be based on abundance. It's always in deficit. Anything blocking the door. But the Bible says, I've set before you. Are you reading the Bible at all? Most of our prayer points are against the things that God has given us in Christ. They are against the covenant. I've heard Pastor Yen preach the covenant for many years. He has taught it for many years. Even today was sweet, but I've heard him go deep in the thing many times. He has taught it for years. He knows. It's one of his best messages. If you understand the covenant, it's not, you won't be running from Satan. Say what they buried in your village. They buried goat. You, you buried a human being. Their own goat got rot in other ground. Your own that you buried, he woke up. And he's walking about. Your own sacrifice is walking about. He's still making intercession for you. And you're worried about goats that is rotting. Your own sacrifice talks. I get what I'm saying. See, they buried goat. Ah! May God help Nigerian Christianity. This is why many people travel abroad and can't serve God. Because all the fear you give them, they remove it abroad. They remove it. All this pressure you give them, pray. So when they shout, but they can't pray. Because real prayer is not making requests. Real Bible prayer is not making requests. It's fellowship and communion. That's why people like us, we can't backslide no matter the country we live in. Because we have a love relationship with God. It's not a need-based relationship. How many of you does your mechanic call you to check up on you? 
or you call him regularly? Sir, I'm just checking you. Nobody does that. You only call your mechanic when what? That's the kind of relationship many people have with God. They can never grow in knowledge of God because they see God as somebody that they are pushing to come and solve problems. Philemon chapter 1. One of the things I hope we will do in the body of Christ this year, let's change our prayer points. I, I would love to be in a service where all the prayer points will be about what we have and how to use what we have. You heard the story that Pastor Yemi said about David and Solomon. How did David win that battle? He focused on what he had, not what he did not have. He had a covenant with God. He talked about that. Then he used stone and his skill, what he had. Let's look at the Philemon, chapter 1, verse 6. Thank you. It says that the sharing of your faith may become what? No, I can't hear you. It may become what? Effective. Can we make it more enthusiastic? It may become what? Effective. effective. Most of our operations of faith and Christianity in Nigeria is not effective. Nigeria should be better than this by now. With the amount, did you see the traffic in crossover service day? So I said, this, we have this amount of Christians in this country and nothing is changing. You know why? They are running from something. They've told them they can't. They don't have Look at this. If your faith, if the sharing of your faith is going to become effective, it is by what? The acknowledgement of what? Every good thing, which is where? In you. In where? In Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your faith is going to become effective. Your Christianity is going to become effective. Oh, man. Oh, man. We have too many Christians for where we are as a country. Too many. See crossover everywhere full. I was seeing pictures of just what? Traffic on Sundays everywhere. But they said our faith will become effective by the word acknowledgement. That means we agree. We need to acknowledge every good thing. Which is where? No, I can't hear you. Where's the good thing? No, you're not sure. Where's the good thing? It's in you. There's a good thing in you. If Nigeria doesn't want to be, be good, that's his concern. You, there's good thing in you. So watch what you're saying. That this country is finished. As long as you're still here, it's not finished. It can't finish. It should not finish. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? It says the acknowledgement of every good thing. So you can be a believer and spend most of your time focusing on what you don't have. Unfortunately, that's what we teach. That's what we pray. And there's no way we will teach and pray the way we do that a believer will focus on what he has. He will always be interested in what he doesn't have. I pray for you. Everything you have lost, you will find it. Everything you don't have, you will get it. Anybody chasing you, you will outrun them. Everybody... Let's see a guy in Job chapter 1. Most of us know the story of Job. Job chapter 1. Interesting book. There's no official record of who wrote the book of Job. Some people say it might be Moses and all that, but there's no official record for it scripturally, okay? Job from chapter 1 verse 1. Let's start. It says, there was a man in the land of Oz whose name was what? I can't hear you. Whose name was what? He said, and that man was what? Yes. DJ, can you give me King James Version? All right, King James Version, if you can. He said, that man, okay, good. There was a man and all that. That man was what? I can't hear you. What was that man? Perfect. Perfect. And what? Upright. Upright. And what? Feared God. And what? Please take note of this. This is very important. This man was perfect. He was upright. He feared God and hated evil. Good guys. Next verse. And there were born unto him how many sons? How many daughters? Next verse. His substance also was what? 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels. And what? 500 yoke of oxen. And what? 500 she asses. And a very what? Great household. So that this man was what? The greatest of his. 
Next verse, DJ, move fast as you can. He said, his sons went and what? Feasted where? Yeah. So they all had houses. <laughs> Pastor Yemi talked about real estate. This year is such a real estate year. Amen. So please be radical about your faith. Price any land. Price any house. Tell them you are coming back. Ask them how much you can deposit. Of course, follow the spirit too. But it's a radical year for real estate, both locally and internationally. Don't say no to any real estate opportunity. Just say, I will think about it. I will get back to you. And the whispers will come. Next verse. He said, they feast in the houses and everyone is there. And they sent and called their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Next verse. He said, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them. And he rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. He said, for Job said, please take note. For Job said, it may be that my sons have what? Sinned. And don't what? Cost God in their hearts. Does the Job how many times? See what they said about Job. Good man, rich man, everything. But he was perpetually. He was in prayer continuously. A lot of prayer. It's not all prayer that is making sense. He was in prayer perpetually, but the prayer was fear-based. Die, they've killed somebody. Hey, this children will not kill me. Hey, God, help me. Next verse. DJ, quickly, next verse. It says, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about. Okay, now next one. Now there was a day when the sons of Job, um, uh, sons of God came to the presence of the Lord, and Satan came also amongst them. Next verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where are you coming from? The Satan answered the Lord and said, From Moshudi. <laughs> from to and fro the earth, from walking up and down in its next verse. He said, And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? That there is what? No. This is God's testimony now. This is not somebody that said. God said there is nobody like Job in all the earth. A what? Do you remember this, this phrase? He's what? A perfect man. What? Upright man. And what? what? If God says you fear God, it can't be faked. <laughs> he feared God and did what? This is God's testimony. Next verse. Then Satan said to the Lord, does Job fear you for nothing? See what Job, Satan said. Has not thou made what? For the first time, Satan said the truth. I have a message I preach on this thing titled, it's so true that even the devil knows it. The things you have in Christ is so real. It's so true that even Satan knows it. Satan knows many believers' rights and privileges more than the believers. This is Satan testifying that his job serving you for nothing. Did you give me back? He said that you have made an hedge around him and about what? So you made a hedge about him, about what next? His house and about what? All that he had. On how many side? No, I can't hear you. On how many side? On every side. How did Satan know it was on every side? Because he has tried to attack the guy from where? Every side. He has gone from here. They block it. Said, let me try back. They block it. Let me try this side. That's how he knew it was on every side. He tried to attack him. On every side. He said, there's no road here. Ay, 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 ay. He said, thou hast blessed what? When I see people say, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. You must bless me in 2024. Or what? What's the alternative? You either be blessed or yes. There's no point. That's it. From, his, from God's end, he has, he's ready. He has done it. He's not going to do it. Let's see. DJ, quick, let me finish fast. And he had, on the other side, that has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. He said, and all that. So stop there. Okay, let's, let's quickly see what Job said after the problems of his life happened. Job 3, 25 and 26. Job chapter 3. After Job lost everything. Look at what Job also testified. He said, for the thing which I what? I can't hear you. For the thing which I what? Greatly feared. This what? is come upon me. 
and that which I was afraid of is what? Come unto me. Next verse. He said, I was not. Is that true? No, I can't hear you. Is that true? That's why when you read the Bible, it's not everything in the Bible that is the word of God. Some they were quoting people, what people thought of God, which was not correct. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because sometimes people take the Bible and see everything inside. No, no, no. Some parts were just history. For instance, that Solomon slept with his housemate is not, the, is not instruction. <laughs> but see, I mean, have, have people that, that are pushing polygamy. Ah, uh, big Christian cults that they are pushing polygamy seriously now. Biblically. Big. Ah. Uh. <laughs> these are things they quote. That no, none of the patriarchs of the Old Testament married one wife. I said, go and check how all of them ended. You can't pick only one side. Pick the cause and also pick the effect. Abraham sleeping with the housemaid. We are still dealing with the they're still bomb in Palestine and Israel today. Today they bomb. You say you want to copy. Is everything you see you copy? <laughs> Somebody get what I'm saying? Solomon tried it. He got to a stage he was writing rubbish, vanity upon vanity, all his vanity. We are all mad. I'm tired of this life. You. <laughs> he began to write rubbish. <laughs> are you here, Solomon? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Where was I? He said, give me that. He said, he said, I was not what? In safety. Was that true? He said, neither had I rest. Was that true? He said, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. So he was like most Nigerian Christians. We have so much, but we focus on what is not missing. Just listen to the average prayer point. The average things Nigerians do. It's focused on fear, focused on what we don't have. Let's start telling people what they have. Believers in Christ, can you start focusing? Let's, you see, our faith becomes effective by the acknowledgement. As you are going to 2024, please acknowledge all you have. Acknowledge what? All you have. The day you do it, you'll find out that your prayer tempo and prayer point will start to change. The day you start to read the Bible, most of you pray, you are praying. You can only pray without reading the Bible. If you start to read the Bible, you will, as you are praying something, you'll be seeing it that is your own. <laughs> After a while, <laughs> you, it will start telling you not, you can't be asking for what's your own. You can only sustain the prayers we pray in Africa by not reading the Bible. For instance, I've mentioned the one that's anything following you. The Bible said, These signs. That's what's following you. Goodness and mercy. That's what's following you. So how do you chase what's following you? Let's declare some things that we have. For instance, number one. Say with me, I have authority. I have authority. Mark chapter 10. Just Christ said, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. That's authority. Or the exousia. So I've given you authority. I've given you what? I can't hear you. I've given you what? Authority. authority. So can you be, so when you are in prayer and you remember you have authority, you are no more begging God. You are speaking to things. You are saying this week, I command you, you'll be a favorable week. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have authority, like Jesus spoke to the mountain, spoke to the fig tree, spoke to the, the sea and the, and, the, and the wind, you will start speaking with them. You have, acknowledge something you have. Number one, you have authority. I can never forget, I have one of my boys. He's a church member. He's one of the people that his story always blesses me. He finished school, humble background, didn't have money when he was starting life. He was working in a bank. Of course, the bank was stressing him, wasn't paying him great. But he was also good at doing MC. So eventually he resigned from his job to be an MC full time. He was not so rich at the time, but he felt that's what God wanted him to do. So we prayed with him and everything. He went to do the MC. And his own story is so interesting. He, he does MC all over the world. They carry him to Europe to do MC, carry him to London to do MC, carry him to America, everywhere. So he, he's doing well in dollars, in foreign currency. You know, all this foreign currency is going up is, is because of what you're earning. People earning dollars are not complaining. Oh, one of the things you must constantly say is that you prosper in every currency. I've been saying that forever. 
I prosper in every curse. I met one of my boys again in LA, Los Angeles. He said, Pastor, those days when we started coming to church, you used to say you prosper in every curse. We didn't know what you were saying, but we to join to say it. He said, thank God we join. Because if, if it was just Naira you were earning now, you must earn a lot of Naira for it to make sense. Come and say with me, I prosper in every currency. Say it with boldness, I prosper in every currency. So, this guy began to travel around the world, do MC. And, um, of course, the way I know people are really prospering is that when they share testimonies, not just verbally, they demonstrate it. Every time the boy comes to share testimony, see me, you know, foreign currency exchanges. Hands and uh, So, I was in America, in Houston, and he said he was coming to town to do MC. So he said he wants to see me, wants to see me, he was particularly he has to see me. I said, okay, yeah, come and see me. So he came out, came to Houston. And when we met, he said he wanted to bring me, you know, dollars. He was planning to give me a seed, but that they stole his bag in New York. That when he got to New York, if you don't know New York, <laughs> New York, you know they have Wall Street in New York, but they also have streets. Mm. It's like Marina. New York is like Lagos Island. So if you, you should understand what I'm saying. So there's Marina, there's top building there, but there's also tall operation there. <laughs> so he said when he brought his two bags, he had a, a rock sack that had money and some other things inside it. So he, he brought that down to take his two bags into the train. So as he took his two bags into the train, <laughs> when he turned back, the small bag was gone. I was first pitying him. So uh, when he now mentioned that the money he wanted to give me. <laughs> well, you know, when you your problem is your problem. If my money is inside that bag, is it's our problem. <laughs> it's now our problem. I, I, I don't lose my things. See, there's a, if you have a covenant mindset and a word of God mindset, there's a way you just see things. You, it will react, you, you react. I don't lose my things. I don't lose my opportunities. It's not pride. It's just how, when you work with the covenant. So, you know, when he was saying he lost his bag, I was sorry for him. When he said, and the money he wanted to give me was in the bag, ah, I moved from pity to anger. Satan, you can't steal my money now. So I prayed for him. As I was praying for him, my mind was telling me that bag that they stole in New York, in ghetto, New York. You can't find it now. If you find it back, the money must be gone. But you see, I still prayed because we have what? Authority. I said, they will find the bag and they will find the money. <laughs> yes. I'm very sincere. <laughs> Sorry for my sincerity. <laughs> but it's the truth. So, one or two weeks after, he finished the event he was doing in Houston. Went back to New York like one or two weeks after. I went to Lost and Found. And they found the bag. He shot a video of when, he gave him, when they gave him the bag. It was still in the office, their office. He opened the bag. When you open the bag, the money is the first thing you will see. And the money was still there. Complete. My money. So he came to Nigeria and gave me my money. I quickly collected it. He said, this boy, hmm. I don't know where you keep your bag again now. Don't lose my dollars, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but ask my wife. Even after I prayed for him and he left, I kept telling my wife, we don't, we don't lose money. Ask her. I was, I was troubled. Not because of money, of course. The, not as if the amount of money was going to be. No, 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 no. I, but I was troubled. See, when Satan begins to convince you to lose small things, from there he will go for big things. So don't make it a habit. Your children are sick. You just accommodate it. Mm -hmm. When I say unnecessary delays, mm -hmm. things, my things don't delay like this. Why? Somebody get what I'm saying? You need to get some spiritual anger. So I kept telling my wife, throw out in the car. The guy has gone. I said, ah, they don't steal my things. They don't steal my money. So I was not surprised when he shared back and said they found it. Look, today before we go, I trust we will have time. Any of your thing that is lost? Hmm? No, don't raise your hand. I will not speak for you. You. You have authority. Because after Wolfbeck, you still have... 11 months in this year. So if you're only waiting for what I speak for you here, who will speak the remaining one for you? 
when you get home and throughout the year, anytime you see any of your things that seems delayed or missing, like Jesus, get angry and speak to it. No, they want to rebuke. No, they want to tell to be calm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Come on, say, I have authority. That's number one thing you have. On that thing you have, you have favor. Come on, say, I have favor. Psalm 5, Psalm 5 verse 12. He said, he will surround us with favor as a shield. Ah, Pastor Yemi to teach us a lot on favor. He has good message on favor. Come on, say, I have favor. I have favor. No, say it with confidence. Say, I have favor. I have favor. From today, always expect special treatment. I'm troubled if I don't get special treatment. I'm worried. No, no. I know that everything about me must be special. There must be some favor. We are surrounded with favor as a shield. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> Last year, 2023, um, we did our conferences. We were in 22 cities in the, in, in, in the world in one year. 22 cities. <laughs> That's a lot of traveling. I was on the air more than I was on the ground last year. <laughs> 22 cities. The Canada trip, the Canada tour, we did seven cities in Canada. Lagos to Canada and back to Lagos, we were on 20 flights. 20. That's just Canada tour. 20 flights. So imagine the amount of planes. America, we did 10 cities. One of the flights, it landed and took off at the same time. Do you understand? The plane landed and ran and took off. You know, Nigeria, when plane land, it's a cost of Thanksgiving. This plane landed and took off. So I waited after the landed again. I waited to see the pilot. I said, what happened? He said, oh, he's a military pilot. That happens all the time. They call it a go around. That if you land first time and you don't think you'll make the wrong way or you don't like your landing, you go and turn again. <laughs> I said, next time, drop me. <laughs> we don't do like that in Africa. <laughs> we don't fly up and down like that. <laughs> if you land, just drop me first. <laughs> Drop me, don't carry me and go around. <laughs> Praise God. But the point, the point is that we flew to many countries. We flew all around. One of my daughters that was in charge of the coordination of the conferences globally, he's the one that has been in touch. She's the one that has been in touch with the volunteers and all that in the, in the, on the Canada tour. She applied for Canadian visa months and months. It didn't come out. And we we're going through the US. So she followed us. She's the main coordinator. No Canadian visa. She's going for Canadian conference. She followed us from Nigeria. I didn't want to put them out. Because when people are walking in faith walk, be careful like Eliab. Sometimes what you're giving advice is killing their faith. But it looks like advice to you. Because God always does new things. Just because it didn't work in your hands doesn't mean you didn't work in their hands. So be careful of the Eliab spirit. So I didn't want to put them out in her case. Because I've never seen somebody going to Canada, you are taken off from Nigeria. Ah, they might drive you. <laughs> but I'm not the one that will tell you. Because your faith... Can we make you whole? The Bible says, beat unto you. So she took us with up from us in Nigeria, got to America. We were not going from America to Canada. She said she's coming, she'll go to the Canadian Embassy. We say, may God be with you. But she's the main person. She's one in touch with all the volunteers, so we need her in Canada. She went to the embassy in Canada that she applied for visa. She said they don't give visa in embassy in Canada here in America. That she go to VSF. They have the VSF in America. So she went to the office. The person met her said, Ah, we don't can't do anything about it. This is why she was talking to somebody else. Those whispers. Another person that it doesn't concern came and said, oh, is this the kind of problem you have? He said, take this email, take this number, send this, do these things, they will answer you. In a few days, they gave her the Canadian visa while she was in America. And she came right on time before the conference started in Canada. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That is favor. She took off from Lagos by faith that I will go to Canada. They gave her the visa on transit. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Come on, say, I have favor. I have Next one, say, I have help. I have you know, most times in Nigeria, we pray, oh, call, uh, destiny helper, oh, this helper, that helper. Everything is deficit in Nigeria. Everything is deficit. Everything we pray is deficit. But you have help. He said he's an ever-present help. Acknowledge the one you have first. Don't always talk about what you don't have. Oh, God, send me help. You have when they came to the prophet, say, oh, they want to kidnap my children to as ransom or whatever, or collateral. The prophet said, what do you have in your house? 
Went out to feed 5,000. Say, no food. Jesus Christ said, what do you have in the crowd? He said, it's an ever-present help. DJ, can you give me that scripture? It's an ever, Psalm 46, verse 1. He said, God is who? And what? A what? Is he present or absent? Is he on his way or is present? He is present. You have a helper. I'm never stranded. Come on, say we come with I'm never stranded. Every time, time you go for an employment, an application, or whatever, you will run into somebody. I, t- I took my kids on holiday to Dubai, went to a few people. So the children wanted to go for theme park. So I took them to the theme park. It's outside of Dubai. It's at the outskirts, almost in the village. Outside of Dubai. Took them to the theme park. And I got there, and I forgot my wallet that had the card that I could use. So imagine disappointment the children, carrying them that far. And they can't do all the theme park they wanted to do. So I used that to teach them about having a good attitude in trial. <laughs> you know. But after giving them that lecture, me and some of the adults that were there gave them the lecture. Inside me, I was worried. I told you I'm always worried about things like that. I said, no, I'm never stranded. Yes, I forgot my wallet, yes, but I'm never, I'm in Dubai, I was scared, not Dubai City, I was scared of town. I said, and I'm serious, I always question things. I don't let things slide. You lose your money, you will apply for something. You be thinking, it might, it might be a mistake you made so that you will correct it. It's never from God's end. God is good. God is good, forget that. Check, check whether you missed it somewhere so that you will correct it. I was worried. A few minutes after, somebody came in a golf course, golf cart. He came down. I didn't know who he was. The person came down and came to greet me. Guess what? It was one of my mentees that is a billionaire. Mm, billionaire. <laughs> if we wanted to buy the team pack, we could have started negotiating that day. It's that, it's that kind of rich. I get what I'm saying. Inside, what are the odds? I'm never strong. I mean, really, billionaire. On that trip, you just bought Rolls Royce. You know, you don't buy Rolls Royce that telling your bankers. You can't surprise them with that amount. Come on, say I have help. Next one, say I have protection. The year is coming to the year, the year is starting. You will not die anyhow this year. You will not be caught in an accident. You have protection. Robbers can't attack you. Kidnappers can't come near any of your family members. Many years ago, I was a young pastor, single. I was still single then. So because I know I prepare for it was Saturday night, I prepare for messages till morning. So, um, I wanted to go to the next street. It was dark. Where I live was deserted. I had to come out of my estate gate and all that, to my street gate, to go to where they sell biscuits. I wanted to just buy biscuits. Something will keep me awake to study till night. So, as I went there, as I was going, lonely road, only me. I saw two guys on a bike. They were driving past. And that period, guys on a bike were, were, were famous for robbing people. So, I just saw them passing. Something told me these guys are going to come and rob you. And truly, they stopped in front. One of them came down with the gun from, it was the passenger, came down with the gun, came down and said, give me your phone. I said, I will curse you here now. He brought gun, I brought gun. My own can kill his destiny, not just his body. I said, I will curse you here now. When he heard that, he ran back to the bike. When he ran back to the bike, I'm sure his partner asked him, what happened? So he too felt, it doesn't make sense. He came back again. <laughs> I said, if you don't leave here now, I will kill you here now. So he ran back the second time. <laughs> and the, le- the person selling biscuits had closed shop, everything, gone on that table. You know, after he left, I didn't run back home. I still went to where they're selling biscuits. I said, open. The guy said, he opens more. I said, who are those? I said, yeah, I'm robbers. But I still want my biscuits. Come and say, I have protection. I have protection. You need to understand. Let's acknowledge the whole Psalm 91. Hey, on that thing, you have angelic assistance. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
If I start telling you all the things you have, there's enough message to preach. But in Nigeria, we focus on what people don't have. You have angelic what? Many Christians don't know angels are real. Very real. Say, we give his angels charge over you. They will carry you on their wings. I and my wife, this is my beautiful wife, we're a young couple then. We used to go out in the night. Those days, we would drive out in the night, go and cruise, go and play. Sometimes on power bike, sometimes in a car. So this night, we were in a car. Late night, 10, 11 p.m., around one of these bridges here. To the, we're coming from the island. So she was showing me a car. She knows I like cars. So show one fine car. See, you want to look at that car. As I remove my eyes from the road and look at the car, I entered one big hole. Tire bust. My, that my car then, it had a special way. You have to first unlock something before you unlock the... And I, I didn't have the tools. Midnight. I know if you stay in the place long enough, the boys will come and visit you. While we're there, one guy drove past wearing white. Drove past, parked. We didn't stop him. He just stopped. Came down wearing white. He had the tools. We, the owner of the car, didn't have the tools to open, unlock the... He had it. He came down. He didn't ask us. He just came down, unlock everything, change the tire, lock it back. We wanted to give him money. He said, no need. He entered his car. Psh. Come on. You have angelic assistance. This year, you will see angels walking on your behalf. Is somebody get what I'm saying? You have righteousness. He said, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So you are not begging God. You are not begging God for mercy. He's already merciful towards you. You are not begging him for it. You don't understand. You are the righteousness of God, what? In Christ. You are blessed. He said, you are blessed with all spiritual blessing. In what? Heavenly places. You have before you an open door. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Do you want to stand this evening or this afternoon? And declare some things that you have. Can we stand? Today you're not praying any deficiency prayer. You're not coming from deficits. You're coming from abundance. Are you here somebody? Can you begin to declare some things you have in Christ? Take one minute to talk about it. If there's a keyboard, it's here. Play on the keyboard. Just declare things you have in Christ. Goodness and mercy follows me. Oh, he has set an open door before me. Nobody can shut it. I am blessed going out and blessed coming in. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my left hand. It will not come near me. I'm not in lack. I'm not in deficiency. I can never be poor. I prosper in every currency. Nigeria's economy is too small to hold me down. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the town. I am blessed in the country. Mosakatali kaborata satale kebos rete balakande rebo kasone bagoda. Come on, acknowledge you have protection. There are angels surrounding you. You have angelic assistance. You have favor, special treatment. Special treatment. Makosa tala katala barodobos rikatele kebo bo 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 bo. Come on, acknowledge what you have. Come on, come on, come on, pray and give God praise. Come on, go ahead, acknowledge what you have. So, brother, Kade ye kede de de bos. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare 2024 will be a good year for you. You will not walk from a deficit. You will walk from abundance. You will understand that God is proactive and not reactive. Amen. This year we end with fulfillment for you. Amen. It will be your best year so far. Amen. If you receive it, give the Lord a big shout. Give him a praise. Amen.